This episode of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on May the 30th, 2016. Enjoy! Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, I thought today um, I would uh, start off with um, how to look at your computer when it's going bad, when things are going wrong. Okay, it happens to everybody. Oh, I am. Sorry to interrupt. I have a question and I, I need an answer. Okay. <laughs> so I uh, somebody sent me an email, an email this morning. Yes. And when I went to get it, because she asked me to check it, and I pressed it and it came up with the name, and then when I went to press it to come on, it, it went back to where you get an email, how you make your email. Right. And I can't do anything with it. Now it's telling me to cancel. Well, cancel and start again. Cancel my email. No, 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 just uh, close the email, no, your, your email function. Of course, it's not gonna work in here, is it? Cause I have Belkin and you have a different, uh, uh, is that, is that, uh, that's the one you set up for me, actually. is that, well, I don't want to uh, mess with it uh, by trying to get it to connect in here. That would be a bad thing uh, because, can you come to my home? yes, I can, um, <laughs> I can come to your house. I can't come today, okay. uh, but uh, Fred, do you have uh Somebody have a pen on them? Yeah. You know oh, right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's my place. <laughs> you did set this up for me. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, what? Twenty-three archdeacon. Twenty-three archdeacon. And uh, what's your phone number there? Nine zero five. Five four five. Yeah. Six zero four five. Six zero four five. Okay, um, so it's on this, is it? Yeah, Let yeah. Me just have a quick look here. Oops. Slide to unlock. Okay, so where's your mail? Mail is right there. No, that's not it. Not that one. Oh. No, my email. This is your email. No, it's not. Oh, oh. <clears throat> well, not the one I'm talking about. No. Oh, okay. Well, then your email is not on this. No. Okay. No. My email's over here. Hang on. Um. Oh, Gmail. All right. Gmail. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh my God, it just came in. Okay. <laughs> there I'm, you go. I'm, ser I'm serious. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the, the, the genius is in. <laughs> no, every time I pressed it, I... Oh. That'll be $20, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, you okay. have no idea So, So which, which one are you trying to get? The West oh. Jet? Yes. Okay. Got it back. Okay, so we won't talk about that. Yeah, today. itinerary, receipt. Send it to me. Yeah, okay, they're both there. Okay, because she was. I kept saying she said to me, "Check it." Yeah. And I, when I went to it, it came on, but then when I pressed it, it wouldn't come on. Yeah, so uh, I to, I think what you really needed to do here was to close Gmail altogether. Okay, just close it, get out of it, and. Uh, Re sort of restart well, your, I did, your, your I, computer. What I did and was I turned it off and plugged it in again. Yeah. But I didn't try it again before I left because I was... Well, I think that's all you really needed to do was to restart it. You're very welcome. Yes, now, this, off, this, this all comes with... Yes, this is one of the yeah. things that... Uh, it's, it's an object lesson in if your computer goes wrong, 
start to diagnose the problem. Okay? And it's not that difficult. Even for someone who is not, uh, is not what you would call tech savvy, it's not that difficult to diagnose your own problems. Um, the first thing that I would have done if it hadn't been done already was to reboot that iPad. Turn it off and turn it back on again and go from there. 99% of the time in Windows and especially Windows 10, that will solve your problem. Okay, that will solve your problem. Just shut it off and start again. Restart your computer or, or cold shut it down or if it's if it's locked up on you, as you were saying before the class, uh, if it was locked up on you, hold down the power button until it shuts off. Now, wait for the click. It may take two or three or four seconds. Some computers are set up that if you hit the power button, they go to sleep. Sleep is not off. Okay, off is off. And if you have to turn it off with the power button because that's the only thing you have left that will turn the computer off, make sure it does shut off. Listen for that click when the computer goes black. Okay? So um, that's, that's number one on how to get a uh, misbehaving computer under control. Now the next thing you have to do is figure out why it did what it did. Now that may take a little bit more thinking on your part. Um, if you can, with some difficulty, write down what you were doing when the computer started to misbehave. What program did you have open? What program were you using? And having an open program and using the same, uh, a different program is quite something different. Having your mail open and being on the internet in, in, a, in your browser, you have two programs running. Which one of them went funky, went all crazy on you? That's what you have to figure out. Um, and so writing down what, what you were doing at the time that the computer went off is um, part of diagnosing what problems you may start to have. Was the computer slow at the time? Did it slow right down on you all of a sudden? Programs weren't opening. Uh, programs were opening slowly. The internet was running slowly. That's a symptom. By the way, it's a symptom of having malware on your computer. The computer is trying to work so hard because of all of these other programs open in the background that what you're trying to do in the foreground can't be done because it's sent all its resources to the background to handle the malware. Okay, So that is a, a second thing to look at when you're trying to diagnose what happened to my computer. Why did it just quit? Um, if it was running slowly before it did, you have malware. Now, if you're not comfortable with removing malware, you got to call a guy like me. I come and I do it for you. If you have done this kind of thing on your computer before by yourself, then the thing to do as soon as you get the computer stable, where you can at least make one program run, run the malware, and the anti-malware program right away, okay? And get that malware cleaned out of there. Um, it's surprising how much malware can be loaded on your computer in the space of a couple of weeks between uh, attacks of malware bytes where you're removing malware and then the next time you, you run malware bytes, you've got 600 items on your computer that uh, weren't there before in a couple of weeks, what happens is that one little thing slipped in 
and then it just sat there and sort of and sort of just listened and it said well gee nobody's looking for me nobody's trying to molest me on this computer it's safe to be here so what does it do it calls its friends come on in I found this really nice place to play and after one little infection now you've got 50 and a week later you've got 200 because every one of them is doing the same thing sits around for a minute says nobody molested me and it calls its friends Can I and ask your question when you say anti-malware do you mean anti-virus as well uh, okay we'll talk about virus and we'll talk about malware in just a second they are two separate things um, and so after a couple of weeks um, of number one the uh, the infection that you originally had probably turned off your antivirus and your anti-malware in the background so it's not working all right oh yes it can do that so you have to reinstall it? No, no. Once, once you get uh, your computer under control with an anti-malware program um, that uh, you can run, then when you restart the computer, the your anti-malware and antivirus will start, should start working again because nothing is interfering with them. Um, and so that's another way of diagnosing what's wrong with your, with your computer. If it slows down nine times out of ten, it's because it has malware and possibly virus-like activity. Now, to your question, virus and malware, are they the same thing? No, no. Think of virus as a cold virus. You get a cold, you got it from somebody. Okay, you shook their hand, you kissed them on the cheek, whatever, you got it from a personage with a cold. They gave it to you. The cold sat there and, and, and inside of your body for a little while, cooked up for a little while, made you sick, and just as it did, it became contagious, so you shook somebody's hand or kissed them on the cheek, you gave them your cold. This is virus-like activity. Okay? The virus-like activity looks around on the computer that it's infected to say, is there another computer on this network that I can go to and copy myself to it? Okay, that's virus-like activity. The, the, the virus going through the computer looking for open ports to other computers. Your antivirus is looking at that, saying, is that happening? If it is, what program's doing it? If it's a program that I know about and it's bad, I will make that program go away. Okay, that's virus-like activity. Malware is a program. End of definition. It's a program. And antiviruses, for the most part, don't know about programs because the malware program does not have this virus-like activity. It doesn't want to look around for other computers. It doesn't want to replicate itself. Okay? It doesn't do that. So the virus, excuse me, the antivirus knows nothing about it. You need an anti-malware program to get rid of these things. How do you know if you've got it or don't have it? Um, your computer will slow down over time. Over a couple, three weeks, uh, what you remember it was doing, how fast it was running a couple, three weeks ago. It's, a really, it's really struggling to open a program like an internet browser. And once it does open it, it's really struggling to load it. Okay? Um, and so that's, that's the tip off, that you have things going on in your computer that should not be going on. Is that something that gets installed initially, or does it just happen? It, it install, it, when you go to websites that have been infected with this stuff, Okay, as a for instance, um, my wife went to uh, a website that was hawking a recipe she wanted. 
So she clicked on the recipe she thought she wanted, and along with the download of the recipe came this other crapola that was malware. So um, it can come in with things that with things that you want, like a recipe. The other way of doing it is what's called a drive-by. When your computer connects to the internet, let's say that this is connects to recipes.com. Re the server at rep that's serving you recipes.com understands that a new computer has connected to it. Your computer. It's a brand new one. It has unique qualities. Um, an IP address that's unique. It hasn't seen it before or it hasn't been there for a while. If that recipes.com server has been compromised by someone and they have put malware on that server, as soon as the server recognizes a new connection, it would just simply load the program onto that new connection. That's called a drive-by. You drive by, it shoots. Okay, the next time you, you uh, start your computer or even after a couple of minutes of working in the background, that program will, will load itself and all of a sudden it's doing stuff. Question. Yes? If you just bookmark it, you're not downloading it. You this whole drive-by thing is if you attach to Let's say recipes.com. If you go there, as soon as the page loads, recipes.com knows who you are. Okay, so it doesn't even have to be. It doesn't, it, bookmarks or anything, doesn't matter. It knows who you are. And if there's malicious software there, it will load onto your computer immediately in the background. You won't see it. Uh, let's talk about the likelihood of this happening. Okay? For websites that um, have a good reputation, like recipes.com has a good reputation. Okay? But th they can still be compromised by somebody. Somebody can go to the, re the recipes.com server and they can compromise that server. It's just the way it works. The likelihood that you will be compromised. If the server is compromised, the likelihood is 100%. If the server has not been compromised, the likelihood that you will be compromised at that server is zero percent. It's up to the people on the other end to keep you safe. Okay? Because believe me, after they these servers get hit a thousand times a minute. And if things start to go wrong, then somebody is going to contact recipes.com and say, hey, your server just served me malware or a virus. And the phone calls will start to flood in. It's like a, a traffic accident on the highway. Okay. How many 911 calls come in for that traffic accident? Okay. Maybe 100. But 1,000 people drove by it. Okay. So the, uh, the owners of the websites, the owners of the web servers, are kept in the loop just by folks like you that, you know, get angry and call them up and say, hey, you messed me up. Get on it. Is that why websites update their things all the time? Instead? That's one of the reasons. Okay. Um, the other reason is, is that they like to serve you new content all the time. You're getting new content. Uh, but uh, another reason is that um, big websites like news sites, okay, um, like Yahoo News or Google News, will are constantly updating their servers to give you the best experience of being attached to their network. 
So they're constantly updating their stuff. And, when, and because they are, they're constantly checking their stuff for compromise. What are the chances that you will be compromised by something on the internet in the next six months of, you know, the half dozen people that are here? What are the chances? Maybe 20%. Maybe 20% of you in the next six months will get something downloaded onto your computer that you don't know about. All depends on what you're doing. If you're just going to Google News during the day to get your news fix, the chances of something happening to you are slim and none. If you go to Google News and you and you go constantly going through the stories that are presented to you from every web server in the world, okay, the chances of something happening to you in the next six months go up substantially. Okay? Yes? Is there a difference between, I read MSN News, but some of them say sponsored across the top. Yeah. Is that different? Yes. Um, sponsored websites are in fact advertisements. That's what I thought. When I started yeah. looking at um, Now, here's a thing to be really, really careful of. The advertisers on a website or that are presenting ads from a website are presenting them from a different server than the content you're looking at. If you're looking at a news site and it's presenting you news, and you look off on the top right and you see a little box that, that says sponsored by, if you click on that, you're going to go away from the server you're getting your news from and you're going to go to a third party server. Third party server. It's not it, it removes, it takes you away from where you want to be and takes you someplace else to show you an ad. Third party servers are notorious for giving malware, for presenting malware. They're notorious for it because they're so easy to compromise. The people that put these ad servers up to serve ads, um, they don't care about the people that come to their servers that are forced there by, by clicks or that are forced there by uh, pop-up windows or what they don't care. Everybody, every computer that turns up at their ad server gives the guy 12 cents. 12 cents a second. 12 cents a hundred times a second. 12 cents, 10,000 times an hour. Every single one of them, the guy gets 12 cents. And folk, he don't care about you. He just cares about the click that got to the ad server. Because somebody's going to pay for that. And he doesn't care about you. If, the ads, if that ad server is compromised, hmm, okay, who cares? Ad servers are really, really a bad thing. Um, for the sake of argument, if you're going to go to, um, if you're just cruising around the internet looking for something in particular, um, whether it be a news item or whether it be information, Um, looking for information on the internet is usually a pretty safe bet unless you go to some place that is obscure. An obscure information type thing on the internet. Um, if you're looking for obscure information, you will eventually wind up there to, a, to some obscure place. But let us just say that you're looking for um, information on lawnmowers. Your lawnmower quit working and you want to know why. 
So you can just start by um, um, there's lawnmower parts service reviews. You can buy a battery for it, blade sharpening. All local stuff here. Lawnmower repair. Let's click on that. And it's going to give you a bunch of websites having to do with lawnmower repair. And in our case, it's giving, giving us the three closest ones that are on the internet. Uh, Windmill Power in Dundas, Burt's uh, up on Crockett, and Davidson's over on Wellington Street. Um, if you go to these places, a lot of times you can find information about your problem. Why your lawnmower quits, quits running after two minutes, or why it won't start right away, or why it takes 15 pulls to get it to go. Okay? That's the kind of information you're going to go looking for. For the most part, if you're looking on these people's websites, you are safe. You are safe. If you're going to, and if you start looking on a website that seems a little bit janky about the information it's giving you, if, it seemed, if the website name has nothing to do with what you're looking for, you might be in a bad place. It's just waiting for you to touch something so something will download to your computer. Does yes? Does uh, to, to a large help you To a large degree it does. Now, uh, I don't have sa a safe search program on this computer because uh, Google is really, really good. That's where I got mine, Google. Yeah. Uh, Google is really, really good about uh, if it divines that a website server has malware on it, it will stop you from going there. It'll throw up a big red page saying, um, you don't need to go here because we've determined that there's malware on this page. Uh, we're not going to let you go here. It's up to the, the person that runs the web page to fix his problem before we'll let you go there. That's why I don't use them. But things like um, you're thinking of, uh, what, what's a web, uh, uh, web of trust? Yeah. 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 Uh, say, there's a safe search from McAfee. It gives you a green check mark against a website. Okay. Those are all good. Those are all good. But I don't use them because I think Google is good enough for me. Anyway, if I go to click on something and it gives me that great big red page, I know, well, hey, they've already checked ahead of me. Okay, there's something. The, these programs like uh, McAfee, the, the, the safe web surf, surf from McAfee and stuff, what they do is if just uh, you click on the web page, say Davidson's lawnmower repair. You click on the web page and you want to go there just before the page loads. McAfee goes to the website first and has a quick look around for any executable program that is headed for your computer and if it finds it, it will put up a red X and say, don't go there, this ain't safe. Yeah. Windows Defender does that as well? Um, no, not really, not really. But um, here again, Windows Defender is for viruses. It's not for malware. And malware is what we're talking about here right now. All right. Um, but that's, that's why I use, uh, I, I don't use any because um, I find that um, for me, Google is good enough. Um, but for you, maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, it does. When I write it in, if I write something in, oh, okay. Safe search pops up to show me yeah. on Yeah. Okay. So you've enabled that in in the yeah. browser. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. That that works out well too. Google. I go through Google Chrome to MSN. So is it still perfect? Yes, it is. Oh. All right. Uh, because remember, um, 
Now, if you go to you go through Chrome to get to MSN, yes. and you've activated Safe Search in Google Chrome, maybe yes, maybe no. Okay, here's what would happen. Okay, you're now you're still in the Chrome browser. You're at MSN, Microsoft, the Microsoft network. You click on something that's going to take you through the Microsoft network to someplace else. Okay, so you've jumped from Google search into MSN to someplace else. Yeah. Google Chrome is still looking at what you're doing, getting there ahead of you and saying, is everything okay here? Is it a little janky maybe? Is there a program getting ready to download? And if it does, it'll stop you. Okay? That's why it's always good to use Chrome. Um, by the way, uh, Internet Explorer does not do that. And Internet Explorer can be, um, web pages that load in Internet Explorer can use um, technology um, on their pages to allow a complete takeover of your computer by a web page. A complete takeover. This is how it works. When you do an update on your computer, that update is coming in through a website. And the update program is in fact a web page. It's an Internet Explorer page. Let me see if I can make it come up here just to show you. Um, where are we? Control panel and uh, Windows, 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 Windows Update. Ah, can't find it. Update. Check for updates. Okay, this is in fact a web page. Okay, when you click on the check for updates button, it goes out to Microsoft, it queries their server, it says, here I am, this is the resources I have, are there any new ones? And if it does, it says, oh yeah, we'll download them for you right now. And when it downloads them, at the end of the download, it says, we will install these for you right now. And it's doing all of this through web page technology. It's doing it through Microsoft's web page technology. It is doing it through what is called ActiveX. Maybe you've heard me talk about ActiveX before. ActiveX is a bad thing. ActiveX um, is a technology that allows a website to take over your computer completely from a remote location. Now, in Microsoft's case, they need ActiveX to allow these programs to download and run. So ActiveX runs in the background on these to make their updates work. Yeah, but other people, nefarious people, have gotten a hold of the ActiveX technology and put it on their web pages. And when you go there, their ActiveX technology takes over your computer completely. Years ago, when I first started talking to you folks about your computers, I said to you, every time you sit down at your computer, you have to ask yourself a question. Anybody remember what the question was? How many days ago was this? <laughs> a couple, three years ago. Okay. Well, because it's going to be on the video, I will tell you what the question should be. Whose computer is this anyway? Okay. Whose computer is this? When I go on the internet, do I give over my computer to the guy on the other end of the connection? My computer belo now belongs to him. No. No. 
You must always think about every time you make a connection on the internet, you must ask yourself this question. Whose computer is it anyway? And if the guy on the other end wants a connection to your computer that he will call his, go away. Get away from him. That's a bad thing. You must always keep control of the connection that you have to your computer with the internet. And if somebody else has it, has control, it's not your computer. So you must think about this. Every time you sit down to your computer and you want to do searches, you want to do mail, you want to do this, that, and the other thing, you want to listen to music, watch movies, whatever. If you're going to talk to somebody on the other end of a connection, make damn sure that you keep control of your own computer. Don't cede control to anybody else unless you really know what you're doing. Would you want to do that through Skype? How could you talk to somebody else? Well, no. When I, when I say you're ceding control, um, this, this ActiveX technology that we talked about a minute ago, that's what's taking over. Okay? Now, um, if you call me up and, and you have a problem with your computer and I have put a program on your computer that allows me to log into your computer and fix your program and fix your problem, okay, yes, you have ceded complete control of your computer to me. Do you trust me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that the same as then my friend is with Belle and when she has a problem, she talks to somebody and they say, take your hands off the computer and it's still working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. say, now she stopped doing that and the reason she won't put a bank account and things on is she says because they can see it. Can they? Or can you even? Um, I can see it if you give me permission. Okay. Um, there are ways of doing it where um, the person on the other end of the connection does not need permission. And this is done surreptitiously. Okay? Surreptitiously. They, the connection is made and you don't know about it. My wife's computer sitting in her bedroom at the foot of her bed, I showed her one day that um, from my office, I could turn on her webcam on her computer, and I could see her reading her book and playing with the dog on the bed. And anything else she was doing on the bed. <laughs> okay? This is done surreptitiously. This is done with... with um, hacker programs. Um, this computer has a webcam on it. I, I don't know why I haven't put a piece of tape over it, but someday maybe I will. If you have a webcam on yours. I close mine all the time. Yeah, my, oh, well, I, I close mine when I normally put this yeah. piece of tape over Yeah, a piece of tape over the webcam, unless you're, unless you're trying to use Skype or something. It really is a good safety measure. Um, now, the other thing about it is that uh, if you have a, a computer that's capable of Skype, you have a microphone in it. Yes. Okay? That microphone can be turned on remotely. And any, anybody, if you're talking to someone in the room, someone on the other end of a connection, can listen to your conversation with your friend in that room. You're talking to them. The, the computer microphone has been activated. Okay, they can hear you. If you haven't put tape over the, <laughs> over the uh, webcam, they can see you. Okay. Have I frightened you enough? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this likely to happen to you? The odds are slim. The odds are slim. But in this world, if it can be done, it will be done by someone. By someone. 
Um, years ago, uh, back when Windows was Windows 95, okay, a program uh, was developed um, without much thought given to it of what it could do um, to uh, allow people to log into computers remotely and help you know fix problems or or uh, work collaboratively that was another thing to work in a collaboration with someone so you would see their resources their documents okay and they could see yours and as a matter of fact um, you could see their desktop like it was your own and if you wanted to print something you just dragged uh, you would just drag the document from where it was to the printer icon on their desktop and it would print on their printer. That was the coolest thing in the world. Dangerous. Nobody knew back then just how dangerous these technologies could be. Everybody was working towards the the um, the sharing and collaboration with everybody else and to this day that is the raison d'etre for Facebook to collaborate and share with everybody else okay there were all kinds of pro programs that would do this kind of stuff were they dangerous you bet did anybody give it any thought no way are they still out there and more uh, and more robust than ever? You bet. Witness the webcam. Okay. Now, one last little bit of advice I want to leave you with about um, things that can happen to your computer, and um, and you not being in charge or in control. Um, how many of you have teenage female grandchildren? Just about everybody. Okay. Um, are they only slightly older than 13 or 14? Just over age 20. Yeah. For those of, for those that are uh, the age of 13, 14, 12. These technologies on, um, available to a, a, a criminal element um, have become, in the, in the recent past, um, something very, very worrisome. Um, when young girls go on Facebook or they go on their social networks, whatever social network that they want to be on, um, and they post pictures of themselves and they post personal information about themselves, and they can be careful. They can be really, really careful. <clears throat> they can follow your advice and say, this, this information is too specific, be more general about it, okay? There are people who can put together a profile of the activities of a young teenage girl with only a couple of hours of access to their profiles on social network and they can pretty much divine a local address for this person within three or four blocks of where they live. Once that's done, then it's not a great leap to look at all of the internet addresses in that location and start monitoring them. And Maybe there are a couple of hundred, but only one or two will pop up over a given amount of time that it is all of a sudden the, the, 
the target is using this social network on this web address. And once that's done, once that has been figured out, the target is using this web address, this, U, this URL, this DNS number, then the criminal, let's call them that for now. We know we have another name for them, but let's call them a criminal for now. Um, can zoom in on that computer as it's being used with its web camera and its um, microphone and things can start to be recorded and the profile of that young girl can be changed at will. Okay, Then one day, and this has happened as recently as a week ago, then one day a message appears on the young lady's computer saying, I've seen you. I've seen you talk to this friend and that friend and the other friend in your jammies. I've seen you say things. I've heard you say things. I have pictures of you doing things with your friends. You will do things for me or I will tell everybody what you've been up to. Frightening, maddening, it's been done and it's happening all of the time. Can you convince these young people that they may be at risk? Some you can, some you can't, some don't give a damn. Some are even older. Yeah. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. But um, there have been these instances in the recent, recent past, within the last couple of months. This this has started to become a real problem. Um, now, uh, we're long past the the point of of uh, parenthood of young of young girls and young boys, for that matter. Okay, there's an element out there that uh, likes young boys, but we're long past that. But um, our children, and like I said, their children, your grandchildren, uh, and maybe even great-grandchildren at some point, will be exposed to this. And what I'm telling you now, the reason I'm telling you this now, is keep it in your mind. Nobody gets a free lunch on the internet. Nothing is free. And if you want to use these technologies, you have to keep it in mind that they can be used to harm people. Have I frightened you enough? Yeah. Okay, with that, I'm going to say don't worry about it. The likelihood of it happening to you, the chances or someone you know are very, very slim. This kind of thing makes news. This is more than a man bites dog story. It makes news. So that's why you hear about it. Is it happening on every block? No. Has it happened once or twice in this town in the last year? Yes. Okay. So is that more likely to be a pedophile situation or, or bullying? It it could be either one. It could be either one. Uh, in and the the scenario of I have seen you do things and I've heard you talk to your friends this way, that can be a bullying situation, or it can be a coercion situation. Someone is going to be coerced into doing some things.
Okay. Um, the only way that we know how to stop it is to have a really good rapport with these children to say if if this ever happens in this way where you feel coerced into doing something tell somebody you don't have to tell me but for God's sakes tell somebody okay and that's how it gets stopped um, the the uh, the one most recent one a couple of weeks ago the uh, the target of the coercion, a young girl, um, was afraid to go to her parents. So she went to her friend's parents. Hooray for her. Hooray for her. She did the right thing. If she was afraid to go to her own parents, she went to somebody else's. All right, so we're in, our, we're in the home stretch here, last couple of minutes. Uh, any questions about what I've talked about here and I've scared you half to death? Does this, does this only happen uh, on a laptop? Um, no, any computer that, that has a camera and, and a big desktop computer can have a camera plugged into it and a microphone to do Skype or uh, these collaborative projects with other people. Um, it doesn't have to be a laptop. As a matter of fact, it can be a phone. Phone has a camera and a, and, and a microphone. Okay, Or it can be a tablet. Um, tablet has a camera and a microphone. Yes? Cover up the camera. Can you, I know where the microphone is, can you put something over that? No, well, no, not really, but you can turn it off. You can? Yeah. Come on. Um, <coughs> open your volume mixer and you go to your sound system. Uh, but then if you do that, you have to remember what you did to turn it back on again. Um, and like I said, if, if it's, uh, are you likely to be a target? No. Any other questions? Um, is port 993 for the um, Thunderbird mail, is that a safe port? Yes, yes, that, that's a secure port. Okay. Uh, the only ones that are open ports are 110 and 25. All of the rest of them are basically secure ports for the secure socket layer to work. Yes? Anti-malware. Could you suggest? Malware bytes? Malware bytes. Yeah. Malware bytes. B-Y-T-E-S. Well, the last time I was here, we talked about malware, malware bytes. And on my notes, it said it's a method of clearing infection. Uh, clearing uh, malware infections, yeah, not uh, not um, um, virus infections, but malware infections. Um, it's real easy to use. Um, I would suggest that uh, once you've got the program downloaded and run, run it every couple of weeks. Every couple of weeks. It only takes about 40 minutes. Just <coughs> run it while you're not doing anything. Yeah. Yes, you can. You can install it yourself. Is it easy? Is it two seconds to answer the question? Um, I'm going to quickly show you here um, how to do how to get a copy of Malwarebytes safely. There are places you can go where it's not safe, but I'm going to tell you how to get it safely. Okay, you can, you can um, in, the search, uh, in the search bar for Google, malware, B-Y-T-E-S. Okay, and you just... Oh, all one word? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Okay, now safely. And, and uh, if you get it from anywhere else other than where I tell you, you, you might be um, <coughs> getting a, a jacked version of it, which might do other things. Malwarebytes.org. 
dot org. And when you go there, you can you click on the download button, not the buy button, but the download button. And at the bottom of the for home download free version. That's the one you want. For home, download free version. You keep telling me uh, my trial period's over. Yeah, um, that's um, if you write uh, on the lower right of your screen, you should see the um, well. Ev even when you open Malwarebytes, okay, um, on the main page of Malwarebytes, where it's showing you whether it, it's taking an update or what version it is, or the, bo the very bottom entry okay. sh should be um, the, um, the assignment for the trial version, okay? That's the trial version of Pro. That's the trial version of the paid. You, okay. Yeah, if you look at that last entry, you should be able to make a checkbox or uncheck a box that will stop that from happening. It's, it goes back to the free version. Okay. All right? So that's what you want. Download the free version. And, uh, and it's very simple to run. It takes about 40 minutes on a fresh computer. And, um, it's, and you just follow the instructions when it's done. The, the instructions are really, really easy. Easy to understand. The object of the game is to get rid of stuff on your computer. It says, at the end of the process, it says, I found this stuff on your computer. Click here to make it go away. Easy peasy. Okay? That's your pen, by the way. Uh, okay. All right. So that's, uh, that's the way it is, ladies and gents. Um, we pretty much beat this hour to death. If you have any questions about what we've talked about, uh, please send me an email. I will get this up on the uh, on YouTube as quickly as I can uh, over the next day or two. Uh, I have other fish to fry, but I'll do it when I can. Um, One yes? Quick question. This safe site you were talking about, is that a program I download as well? No. Oh. No. No, it's, it's, uh, it's, in, it's in the settings for Google Chrome. You'd have to look around for it. Oh, what was it called again? Safe Search? Yeah, Safe Search. Yeah, do, do, not, do not download a program called Safe Search. A program called Safe Search is far from it. It's, that's the last thing it is. Okay, there is no such program as a Safe Search, but there are settings in Google Chrome to help you search safely. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way you've got it set. Okay. So that's it, folks. Thanks very much. Uh, we will be back in the third Monday of September, 19th. the 19th, and uh, we'll start again. Um, I will send out, um, and Fred will send out some reminders about when it's time to come back. And thanks so much for coming. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.